Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and I have played over 50 hours of Elden Ring. And honestly, this natural smile here could tell you more about this game than any script I could possibly write. Now, I haven't beat this game yet. You could argue this is my review, but with how much I have left to discover in this massive, deep open world, I didn't feel quite comfortable marking this as my final say. We will complete the review probably later this week, but for now, I wanted to deliver my impressions after 50 hours with the game. And no, those 50 hours in just this last week were not placed for crunch sake. I haven't been so hooked to a game like this since Skyrim, one of my favorites of all time. I've loved many games for many reasons over the years between then and now, but outside of Persona 5 Royal, I can't think of any game that has had my butt firmly planted in the gamer chair for this many hours at a time. Elden Ring is a once in a generation video game, a culmination of all the titles that pioneered the very genre from software built with their own hands. The interconnectivity of Dark Souls, the artistic guidance and atmosphere of Demon Souls, the aggressive enemy design of Bloodborne, the stealth and movement mechanics of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Just like we spend all these previous games learning lessons and beating the challenges, it feels like, from software, the developers of this game were also teaching themselves bit by bit different aspects of game design to then blend them all together in the magnum opus open world setting known as Elden Ring. What makes me feel so good about this is the respect for their past work. It only grew my appreciation for what this team has accomplished. Their inspiration from their many forays does not dilute the past so much that I could not envision going back. Much like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I fully anticipate Elden Ring to be the model to follow for years to come. Many will attempt to evoke the same level of attention to detail, enemy environmental diversity, mysteries tucked in every corner, and a sense of danger that only Elden Ring presents. And I can't wait to see who reaches for the crown next because it's going to be a tough act to follow. All these years later, Elden Ring is absolutely worth it. However, it's not perfect and it does come with a couple of hiccups. For starters, this PC port absolutely sucks. Whether I was running it on my 3080, my Alienware M17, or my home PC, it did not matter. This game churned constantly and at times would outright freeze. And that's not acceptable in a game this challenging. It also does have a higher count of, huh, that was actually bullshit type moments than I can recall in previous FromSoft games. It's not quite Dark Souls 2 level, but there are those moments that remind me of that game where they go, hey, you like difficult games, right? Here's 11 enemies at once. Try to overcome this challenge. It can be a little frustrating in those moments. Also, the transition to the open world can hurt some of the character quest arcs, as they can be nigh impossible to track down at times. However, all of these are not enough to stop the incredible momentum of Elden Ring. Why is that? Well, let's dive a bit deeper and talk a bit about, yes, really, the story. Elden Ring is set in the lands between. You are a Tarnished. The goal of the Tarnished is to set out and obtain the Elden Ring and claim your place as Elden Lord. The storytelling here is more of what we're accustomed to in a From Software game. What I mean by that is it's more of a Dark Souls style storytelling than say Sekiro. If Sekiro was like, hey, go here, do this, this will happen, this character will be impacted, they are over there, you can find them specifically here, like it'll actually tell you where to go and what's going on. Not that it didn't have its own secrets, but with this game here, Elden Ring, it is much more in the dark Dark Souls style storytelling. While never having a guiding hand, the strains that tie all these characters together do feel stronger and much more prevalent than their prior games. Instead of the mumbling poetic nothings to the player that hardly make any sense unless you read the item description of a gold crusted dung, the game actually doesn't hesitate to directly interface with the player and fork out bits of lore. This is really important because this time around Elden Ring is, as I've mentioned already, set in a huge open world, and it needs to make sense of a lot of things that you're going to be exploring and seeing. 
Long story short, I actually found myself wanting to talk to these characters and listen to what they were saying. I know it's a bit of a hot take, but as someone who's played all of these FromSoft games, I never found myself fascinated by the lore, but more so the art design of the game because the locales were impressive. The enemy design was always just downright horrific. So I always loved that aspect of the game, and I respect those who like the deep dive into item descriptions and books and whatnot to find out what's actually happening here. But I like that this game doesn't hesitate to sometimes say, would you like to know more about Queen Marika? And they actually tell you what's happening in not this poetic way. They just talk to you like a person. I like that a lot. It's great because you can actually follow things that are happening in the world and why things are the way they are in this hopeless setting. With the open world does come some growing pains. From software games have always and forever been open without much guidance. But given the enclosed nature of their past titles, some characters could be found in particular places because they were much more easy to narrow down. In Elden Ring, the world is so large, staggering, and dense that it is difficult to track the personal arcs of these otherwise fascinating characters, and I do think the journal would have done this game some wonders. Elden Ring's best storyteller is not one of its characters or the lore of George R.R. R. Martin. It is, in fact, the open world. There is such a strong sense of discovery oozing through this game and the way they present it to you is unlike any open world game you've really ever seen because guess what elden ring tells you use your eyes use your eyes they're not going to harass you with a million and one dynamic preset encounters they're going to have great world design which says oh that chapel in the distance let me go there and see what's there and there's actually something waiting for you Whenever I chose to go to a particular corner or area of the map that I felt, huh, that's a little more open than I actually expected. Let's see what's going on over there. There was something worthwhile waiting for me every stretch of the way. And I'm not saying that with hyperbole. Every single area I was seeing and then visiting was something where I was not constantly interfacing with game UI and the map. I was just exploring, being fully immersed. And that immersion is enhanced by the sense of danger that Elden Ring's world presents. And from software style, this game is hard. It's very, very hard. But it's the way that they now capture that difficulty in an open world setting that changes what you can typically expect. Normally you see the fog wall and go, okay, bonfire, spin my runes, my souls, whatever you call them now. You go ahead into the boss arena. Okay, let's really duke this one out. Now it's like I'm strutting along and suddenly a dragon flies out of the sky. Whoa! There are just so many OMG moments throughout this open world where I'll go to a chest and suddenly it's a teleporter. It sends me to another side of the map where I'm just vulnerable. I'm like, whoa, okay, hold on. Everything just got changed for me. I don't even know where a grace point is. And you just crawl through the bushes at night hoping that you're not in a high level area. Again, it's the way the game constantly is presenting itself with interesting things to find and also just putting you in really uncomfortable positions that always keeps you on your toes and makes it a fascinating open world to explore. What's also great about that openness is just like any good open world game, right from the get-go, you can just pick a direction and go. You can just go. Right from the outset in Limgrave, you can just go. Have fun. There is rubber banding. There are certain areas that are four higher levels. I do like that. But this game very much does not stop you from going into deep, dark territory and facing the consequences. What I do think is the biggest strength of this game is the, and I have to use air quotes, side content in the open world because there are moments where there are gargantuan amazing boss fights in these deep complex thoughtful well-designed dungeons that are just sitting there as side content i'm like oh certainly this is main story stuff and i don't even get a main story item like i just get a really cool sword or a spear or a piece of armor i get a nice spell and i'm like that was side content i can't tell you the amount of times when you play this game you will legitimately have a moment of going why was that optional? That was so good that that needed to be main stuff. Like, people need to see that. Don't get me wrong. This game, like any open world game, does have its templates. You'll find catacombs. And in these catacombs, they'll be kind of like the chalice dungeons. You'll sort of know the rhythm of them all. A couple of traps here. Usually skeletons. A boss fight at the end that's activated by a lever. Yes, it will have that. The dragons, while different colors do have different attacks, but you will encounter many of them. So yes, this game doesn't hesitate to reuse assets, but the sheer number of new things you're constantly seeing blows me away. I would actually love to see on paper 
what the budget for Elden Ring was because the amount of new things that are challenging you, that you're looting, that you may not ever see is outright absurd. To me, that top to bottom level of quality, danger, thoughtfulness in the open world is what defines Elden Ring as one of the most unique open worlds you can explore in gaming because there is truly, well and truly, nothing like it right now. On that note, let's talk about gameplay. Elden Ring, it's tough. It's a really hard game. It is absolutely going to activate the conversation on accessibility and difficulty in video games, so prepare yourselves for that. But what this game may have tricked you all with is the closed network test. You find some really good items in the early part of the game. A lot of us were walking out of it going, not too bad. You know, Market the Fell Omen was a pretty tough boss fight, but otherwise, not too bad. This boss fight wasn't that hard. Uh, this game doesn't seem too tough. We had From Software saying, oh, it shouldn't take you too long to beat it. We expect more people to beat this. <laughs> uh, oh, I wish that were true. This game will mercilessly beat you over the head. And for me, in this month, going from Sifu to, I know this is obscure, Trails in the Sky, which is a tough JRPG, and now this... I've just been getting smacked all over by video games. I am in my most roughest and toughest shape, and this game still kicked my ass. And with those new wrinkles to difficulty, like when you die, you will actually sometimes lose runes. It's not like you die and you just drop them and loot them again. When you get them back, you'll lose like 25% of them in certain areas, which is like, oh, okay, I now I really need to get these back because I've already lost something well and truly. But with those new wrinkles of difficulty come some fresh quality of life changes for example one of them is the stakes of marika so this game is all about openness and exploration and one thing that they're very self-aware of is that well this is a dangerous world so when you die we don't want to undo that progress and send you back to some grace point that's a mile away that's just going to kill the game flow so they'll have these little checkpoints if you will they are much more forgiving but what this allows them to do is if i encounter a boss from software can make that boss as difficult as they want because I will respawn at this stake very close by with all of my equipment replenished, which is the right thing to do. For some people, this may ruin the difficulty. For me, I feel it enhances it because the game was allowed to be consistently challenging because they didn't have to hold back in case you weren't at a recent grace point. They're like, okay, let's put these respawn points here. They don't have to be grace points. So there's not a million one fast travel options around the map. Let's just keep it simple like this. And it works just right. An excellent idea that I think a lot of people were scared about because it was a sort of checkpoint system, if you will, but it works out really well. And of course, being set in an open world fundamentally changes the design of your video game, especially when we're talking a From Software game where you could sprint, jump, and crouch. I know we could do this in Sekiro. We could always sprint. We could do the sprint jumps in these awkward ways, but there's actually a defined jump button. You could crouch in the bushes in this game and do stealth attacks. I know this sounds hilarious to bring up in a review because in many games it's expected, but soul style games follow a very specific rule set. And now the game has changed. With these new options, there's much more verticality. There's much more exploration. For example, there's horseback riding now. And on your horseback, you can double jump. So you can get to crazy high areas in this game, especially if you find a wind tunnel, which can just shoot you up the side of a cliff. There is, again, this insane level of exploration. The movement, the traversal, definitely needs to be complemented here because it allows you to freely explore and see what this game has to offer and find all the secrets tucked in these different corners. There's also a map and fast travel points. You can typically fast travel from bonfire to bonfire in any From Software game, but in this game, you could bring up the map, click an icon, and boom, you're over to that place in an instant. No punishment, nothing like that. What's great about this is because as you explore the map, you'll find map fragments that'll then give you a more detailed view of the map, and you'll see little drawings like, oh, that looks like a building there. Let's see what's over there, and it brings you to a church, and in that church, you'll find a sacred tier, so it enhances the exploration there. But what they manage to do is keep the HUD very subtle with the Bethesda Game Studios like map bar at the top, which you can use to ping different items on the map and then track them down. And what's great is in the overworld, you'll see a nice blue ray exactly where you put that ping down, so you don't have to bring up your map a million and one times or stare at a little mini map in the corner again it's about using your eyes and just looking at the game screen and what's happening around you now throughout the world you're going to find these grace points and you'll notice that these grace points have a little bit of a golden glow going off of them and drifting in a certain direction this is how elden ring guides the player they will tell you hey 
Somewhere in this direction is another grace point. And as these grace points connect from one place to the other, it will lead you to a main dungeon or a very important area that will have some loot and likely a deadly boss at the end of all of it. But if that's not enough, you'll see when you bring up the open world map that there are actually directions that they are pointing you in based off the grace points that end in one final area per biome. So there is a level of guidance here and the world's almost constructed in a bunch of set dungeons, if you will, that are all combined together into this big open world setting. So it's like a bunch of games made in blocks. It's like a big Lego set that's put together piece by piece by piece. And suddenly you have this big set that is Elden Ring's open world. One change because of the open world is you'll see more enemies in the distance and this means you can lock on from further. This did lead to an issue I had where sometimes I would lock on to an enemy super deep when someone was right in front of me. This can be frustrating because when that camera's locked on someone and you're trying to roll around, your movements are centered around wherever that lock on is. And if you're locked onto the wrong person, it can give you a mighty frustrating death because especially when this game does not hesitate to throw at you mobs of five to 10 enemies, which can be handled with ease most times. It can be frustrating when you're trying to swap around the lock on and click the right stick, click it again, like, come on, just lock to the guy in front of me and you're trying to get away and get oriented. It can be very frustrating because at those moments, it's when the game well and truly fails you. They also introduced item crafting. This actually encourages the splurging of item usage because as you scour the open world, you'll find these cookbooks, you'll find various items that you can use to then take these materials you find in the open world and in dungeons and craft magic grease, which you can now coat your weapon with a magic aura or fire grease. We always see that where you emblazon your blade in flames. You can do a lot more of these frequently now, and the game gives you a much larger tool set to pull from, which is where I think some of the gripes for some folks will come in with difficulty, because this game does allow you to, for example, hop into a boss fight, and you can cast summon. So I'll cast these marionette soldier ashes that are just gonna unload arrows on the boss, and at times you'll be prideful and go, this doesn't feel right, but this game doesn't care. They'll beat you over the head constantly. So you gotta play by this new rule set. They give you a lot of tools, use them all because you're gonna need them. So item crafting was actually something I thought was a great addition to this game. Every game has crafting nowadays, but when a game is this difficult, those resources are precious. Those resources are needed. And when you're making use of them and cycling them out, I thought it was a thoughtful addition to the game that made a lot of sense. And as you go through this open world, you're going to be killing a lot of mobs. And this game does have that Bloodborne level of aggression where remember when you take damage in Bloodborne, you strike back at the enemy and go like, okay, got my health back now. The way this game sort of does that is as you kill mob groups, because there are much more of them and they're much more dangerous, they'll give you your flasks back. So as you're consuming them, drinking down health and everything, it allows you to stay out and explore more if you're challenging groups of enemies. So there's a nice risk reward in those point a to point b moments where it goes i don't really want to stop at another grace point i just want to keep going keep seeing what this game has to offer me but i don't want to respawn everyone i'm going to take on that group of enemies over there okay boom got them now i got three more flasks let's go into that dungeon i got this there's again that level of high risk high reward even in its exploration which just really defines this game as a true top tier open world title because there's just so many scares throughout. What this does mean though is that sometimes progression will be like roller coaster. You'll find the right dungeon at the right time and you'll get yourself a ton of runes to then spend and level up five times. You're like, yo, I'm on top of the world. And other times you'll go into certain dungeons or certain areas and the enemies will constantly hit hard no matter what point in the game you're at, but you're not gonna get the runes that you quite honestly need, the runes that you deserve to level up. And so it can be a little bit of this as you're going through the open world, trying to really progress. So some sessions will feel longer than others. I thoroughly enjoyed each and every of my like eight plus hour sessions I put into this game in the last week. So I can't really complain, but just know that there's a lot of ups and downs as you try to level up. And I don't know if there's a real true way to grind quickly in this game, which again, I think is good because there's so much content. Like just go play that and you'll level up eventually. And all of this is built on the pillar of a great character creator system. Let it be known that Elden Ring, amongst everything else, is a fantastic RPG where builds well and truly matter. How much do they matter? Let's be honest here, okay? Real talk. My build in this game sucked. 
It sucked, it sucked, it sucked so badly that I truly had to respect. And that respect was locked behind a boss fight that because my character was built so poorly, I was getting slapped up, down, left, right, constantly until I finally beat it, had the right item, and then I could respec. And once I did respec, the game eased up a little bit. So it's important to be educated with your build because certain items scale with certain stats as they would in a FromSoft game. But I love that not only is this game amazing to explore, it is a hardcore RPG through and through. That ties into equipment where now we have weapon skills where you could have angel wing on your winged scythe. And these moves are just sick because they're risk reward. They do high damage. They cost a little bit of FP, which is effectively mana in this game. It's focus points, but you can do some massive damage. I love that this game has a lot of cool weapon combos to use because experimentation is rewarding. For me, I have attachment issues in these FromSoft games. I'll grab a nice sword, a nice set of armor, and I'm very hesitant to move off of that stuff because I'm like, this is working for me. I'm safe right now. But this game really encouraged my experimentation. I was getting into those roots a bit more, which is tough to do in a game so difficult, especially when it was crushing me as often as it was. And on that note, just know there is no item durability. Okay, so you can hit the walls as much as you want. You don't really clip into them as much. There's not as much item collision in this game, which I think is great. Just know you can swing away with the same weapons, have the same armor all game if you want. They're not going to break. You don't have to repair them. You can reinforce them and make them stronger, but you do not have to repair them. Thank the Lord. But it's not all just openness. A lot of this main content narrows down. I know I've talked a lot about the open world and I know this video is going to be super long, so I appreciate you all being patient with me as we walk through really everything about this game. But what will happen is as you get to these legacy dungeons, if you will, the main story things, it'll slim down to the traditional From Software experience. So don't think that's missing here in exchange for something new. It's very much present there. That is also the same for the side content. It'll slim down. It'll bring you into a dungeon. You'll have to be careful. Check the walls, check the ceiling, look for traps, those types of things. Those beats are still in Elden Ring. Don't get me wrong. And there are plenty to be found. There's also the round table hold where you can catch your breath in a Nexus like hub that allows you to interact with a multitude of characters and get some much needed guidance on where your next task lies. So there's a lot here to the gameplay of Elden Ring. It is a dense, dense, game and clearly as you can tell by the length of this video that's why i was like i don't know if i'm ready to do a review yet because there's so much this is after 50 hours there is so much more to be seen so 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 much more but now we have to add a little section here typically i don't do this because i can mention it in the gameplay we got to talk about performance the performance on pc for this game i played it on steam is unacceptable it's not terrible on the level of unplayable. The game at certain moments is very moody where it'll be running fine for like five hours, but then it'll crap out immensely for another hour straight with constant frame dips and at moments outright freezing. And when that happens in a boss fight, let me tell you what, that's a butt clencher you don't want to really have in a FromSoft game where you're like, yo, 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 wait, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to get hit here or not. It can destabilize your rhythm, your flow, and your focus, which are all required to beat the toughest of challenges in Elden Ring. And it's all because on a technical level, this game isn't quite ready and could have used a little more time on the PC front. This shouldn't come as much of a surprise for those of you who have been playing FromSoft games for a while. I mean, let's just look at Dark Souls Prepared to Die when it launched on Steam. We look at the Dark Souls 3 server hacks that just occurred that people's PCs could be taken over through. I mean, if there's any company that rivals Bethesda Game Studios on a level of bugginess on the industry level, it's probably from software, just no one talks about it because their games are so damn good. With that in mind, I do want to make it clear that I do know other reviewers that did have this experience on consoles, on next-gen consoles, mind you. PlayStation 5 is the specific one I had heard the most about where the game does not run this bad. It does not have these types of dips. It is consistently smooth and well-optimized, which again would match the history of from software games that said i haven't laid my hands on it so i can't say for sure but i think that detail being relayed to you will help you make a purchasing decision if you're on pc but you also own a next-gen console i would definitely say 
lean to the next gen console side of things because this PC port just wasn't good no matter where I tested it. Again, I own a 3080 here, a top of the line 2022 PC. Like this is the state of the art technology right now. And that game was hardly running at times on that, let alone my very well specced M17 laptop from Alienware. This game just, it's very questionable on an optimization front. And with that, let's move into sound. So I mentioned the artistic guidance of Demon Souls, which I think this game closely follows. But if there's one thing I was reminded of with the remake that came out in 2020, it's that the atmosphere for that game was really pushed by its ambient sounds. The power of the open world silence, nothing but the hooves of Torrent, your horseback, pounding the ground, can sometimes be downright mesmerizing as light, Little tunes drift in the background, in and out, and suddenly you'll hear the screech of a creature in the distance ever so clearly and go, what the hell was that? Or suddenly the bell ringing of a mausoleum tower and you turn the corner and see this giant rock with four legs with a bell tower underneath it walking around. You're like, what is that? All this is enabled by sound-based discovery, you know, hearing something what is that tracking it down and seeing a thing? But it's also the well-known From Software style soundtracks that oftentimes are unsettling as untuned strings play in the background as you crawl through the decrepit catacombs beneath the land between. Immediately, this game can hop to the other end of the spectrum where things are much more brassy and bombastic with a chorus to boot, heightening the moments of an epic boss encounter to levels that we don't see too often in games. To little details like dying to a boss and them talking copious amounts of shit, the sound design in this game is excellent. The, the sound of a fireball scorching and building up in your hand to when my character's doing a flame of frenzy attack and letting out a scream because the madness bar is increasing. There's just so much effort throughout every level of this game. I cannot clearly compliment it enough. So with that, it brings me to my pseudo verdict if you will. I don't want to call it the final verdict because again, this isn't my review, but I think I've played enough to at least put you in a direction of what you should do with this game. This is a buy on anywhere I think but PC. I can't comfortably recommend the PC version, but if you have an Xbox Series X, you have a PlayStation 5, and you got 60 bucks to spend, do it without hesitation. If you are ready for the challenge, Elden Ring is one of the downright most fascinating, incredible games I've ever played. And again, it is an achievement by From Software, a magnum opus combining all these elements from all these FromSoft games into one, making it all work. Because as you're going through it, it's kind of like an MCU film, right? You're like, oh, that comic reference there. Oh, that character over there. You're not going to see the characters, of course, but you're going to see, oh, they were in their Bloodborne bag here. Okay. Oh, this is Dark Souls style McKay. Oh, and that's from Sekiro. You have a lot of those moments where if you've been playing these games, you've been a student of their game, they reward you with fan service as well. So for those of you also who are looking for a little more bloodborne vibes this game takes good care of you too and as someone who's dying for a bloodborne remaster let me just tell you right here right now that uh oh this game also kind of tortures you a little bit <laughs> so with that ladies and gentlemen those are my much elongated thoughts after 50 hours with elden ring i truly love this game it is 100 percent going to be in the game of the year conversation there are no doubts about that and it's one that if you have the money and the console and you're ready for the challenge you should absolutely be picking this game up because it's an achievement in gaming history as far as I'm concerned. I think quite highly of this game, and it's going to be really hard to budge me off of this game being placed somewhere else other than in a top three game of the year pick for me. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy Elden Ring if you pick it up. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them in the comments down below. I'm looking forward to reading them. And with that, I'll talk with all of you in the next video. A big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who support the content here, especially long review content like this. You make all of the investment worthwhile. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.